Today, we're going to look at road clothes. And you know what a road clothes is. You're driving down the road and you see the red or orange white sign with the barricade. You're not going nowhere any further. You gotta make a U-turn. But we're not gonna talk about making a U-turn except repenting. What we're gonna look at is as an individual Christian or even a lost man, individual lost man or Christian or Christian or a church. Is they've come to a standstill, a road clue, and they can't get by. They can't go further. There's not a left, there's not a right, and you can't go over the sign. It's illegal. What's happened? What's the reason when God, God has put that sign up? God has said, you're not going any further. And friends, this is the cause for many Christians, many people, many churches. Joshua 7.10. And I plan on doing another message next week. But there are some churches that say, well, you know, we're being blessed, we're being... Yeah, but it may not be God. But right now, the roadblock, the road's closed. Joshua 7.10, the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thus upon the face of the ground. Now what happened is Joshua has just attacked Ai. It was a great victory at Jericho. But people died at Ai. There was no victory at Ai. Right now, the children of Israel, they're stopped. And the national leader of Israel, Joshua, has no idea what happened. God goes on to say, Israel has sinned. There's the roadblock. There is the problem. There is sin. God may put up that roadblock Many reasons, but a reason you're going no further because there's sin in the camp. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken of the cursed thing. And have stone, also stolen and disassembled also. And they have even put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies. You can't go any further. Because there was a curse. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed thing among you. That's a hard lesson. Thirteen. Up. Oh, sanctify. Set yourself apart to people. Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is a cursed thing in the midst of thee. There is sin amidst thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thy enemy. You can't go any further. There's going to be no more victories if you take away the cursed thing among you. Joshua has no idea what's going on still. Verse 20. Verse 19. Joshua said to Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Joshua's like, What did you do, Achan? What is wanted? Confession. 
But you see, the problem is Joshua had to start off with the tribe. Then he went to the families. Then he went to the fathers. And finally, he got to Achan. Achan really ne never came up on his own. He came up by lot. And Achan said to Joshua, then, then Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, yet you were caught. This is a sin of a confession of you were caught. It, it's not from the heart. When a child goes and steals cookies from his mom, who stole my cookies? Mom will say. And she goes into, into the boy's room and there's the plate on his bureau with cookies. A couple of them missing. Oh yeah, Mom, I stole them. She should answer when she was in the kitchen. And thus and thus have I done. Thus and thus. No, God doesn't want you. Oh, Lord, forgive everything I've done. Everything I've done today, Lord God, it's wrong. No, oh, he wants you to name them. One by one. Now we sing, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Name your sin. One by one. When I saw the spoils of a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, I coveted them. So he coveted and he stole. There's the Ten Commandments right there. He took them. Behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver is under it. He hid it because he know he sinned. God told Joshua and told the people, everything of, of, of Jericho is mine. Don't you take it. Achan knew. So as a result of Achan's sin, Joshua could not go into Ai and destroy Ai and all the other nations in the land of Canaan. People have died needlessly of Israel. And you read on later on, Achan's own family are going to be killed because of Achan's sin. Friend, you may be one person who has sinned and the roadblock may have been put up for you and maybe your family. Maybe your job, your employee, your co-workers, your employees. Maybe your church is being affected by your sin. Achan, his family's been affected. The congregation of Israel's been affected. The leader has been affected. Because of a garment, silver and gold. Oh, it's a little sin. No one... No one is, will be hurt. Not when that little sin becomes a lot of sin. And God has to put the roadblock up. Oh, stop. And that roadblock is not coming down until you confess and get it right. Israel could not move unto Ai, and this is the Old Testament. Achan never completely, honestly repented. He repented after the fact. They had to kill capital punishment Achan and his family before they could move to Ai. And still, when they went to Ai, still, Ai, still there were Jewish people, that soldiers that were killed. This of Ai is the only lost recorded for Joshua. And it wasn't even Joshua that caused it. First Samuel. First Samuel 28. 
15. Saul, King Saul, has gone to a witch. The Urim and Thurim hasn't been answered. His prayers haven't been answered. God has completely shut him out. You read the life of, of King Saul and his soldier, they're scared. When, when the story of Goliath, they're scared. They're on the run, they're hiding. Only true two soldiers that King Saul has is Jonathan his son and David. And Saul comes to a point, he comes to his witch and she brings up Samuel. Now even Samuel coming up from the dead surprises her. You see, God told Saul to kill the Amalekites. And Saul disobeyed. Like Achan disobeyed. Sin. Rebellion. Adam and Eve disobeyed. Sin. Rebellion. The law said, and, same, and Saul is under the law, you, you should not go to a, to a witch. You shall not go to a fortune teller. You shall not go to one that raises the, the, the dead. And he does. Sin, sin, sin. So Saul has come to a point in his life. God is not answering him. God is not working through him. God is not using him. He has sinned. He has sinned. He has sinned. Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Saul answered, I am sore distressed. Roadblock. For the Philistines make war against me. The, the, the sinners are coming. The world's coming against me. And God is departed from me. Roadblock. God's not the co pilot of Saul. God got out, opened the car door, got out, and shut the car door. They, bye. And answer me no more by prophets. Preachers can't help me. Nor by dreams. Old Testament. Therefore have I called thee. That thou mayest make known to me what I shall do. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. And I'm getting no answers. I'm at a roadblock. Sort of like Joshua. Why couldn't we get this victory at Ai? Why are we in a roadblock? Achan sinned. It wasn't Joshua that sinned. Someone else sinned. King Saul comes out of water. Oh, Saul, you sinned. Then said Samuel, Wherefore thou asking me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and has become thy enemy. Well, that's a great roadblock. The Lord has done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord has rent the kingdom out of thy hand and given to thy neighbor, even to David. Samuel's already spoken. Evidently, King Saul was not listening. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, sin nor execute his fierce wrath upon the Amalekite. Sin. Therefore has the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. What? Put a roadblock. You did not do what God said to do. Christian. Church. Christians. Unsaved. Your life might be in despair. Your life might be in misery. Your life might be without hope. Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. For the unsaved, you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 
For the Christian, somewhere in that Bible, somewhere in that King James Bible, God told you something. Somewhere where a godly preacher preached a message at you through the Holy Spirit, you have not done nothing. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Methuselah. The nation of Israel is going to suffer because of you, King. Remember all, remember all the Israelites that suffered because of Achan? Well, they're suffering because of their leader, because of King Saul. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me dead. So this roadblock. Going to the witch, not obeying the voice of the witch. This roadblock is, all right, open the door, get out of the car, and turn around. There's a graveyard. You're not going any further anymore. The wages of sin is death. You went too far rebelling against God. And God said, okay, now death. And this may happen for... An unsaved man, this may happen for, for a Christian or Christian. You go to the doctor, it's terminal. I'm not saying for all cases. I'm saying for some. Don't you say that, oh, you know, the doctor said I got cancer, I'm going to die because of the sin. That ain't right. Some cases that may be the case. My wife was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. It got to the point she died of breast cancer. It wasn't because of any particular sin. My second wife was diagnosed with lung cancer and died of lung cancer because she wouldn't quit smoking. She got angry with me when I preached to her about smoking a cigarette. When I asked her to quit smoking, when I gave her an attitude, she, she grabbed the key, I'm going to go get me back a cigarette. I give her that look and she get mad at me. When I pray before God in front of her, Lord God, will you help her to quit smoking? She got to, hey, listen, she had other health ailments. When she got to the, to the roadblock, listen, your husband put traffic cones up. You know, the big LED signs inside the highway and up above the highway? She didn't listen. <coughs> And she came to that roadblock. God says, get out of the car, turn around, there's the graveyard. I'm suffering. I don't want to be without a wife. We could have lived longer. Sometimes that roadblock is death. Now Joshua went on to conquer the nations of, of uh, Canaan. King Saul, death. And you don't even see King Saul repenting, trying to repent. At least Achan, you know, kind of, you know, okay, I'm guilty, I've got caught. But. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32. 48. And the Lord spake unto Moses that same, self same day, saying, Get thee up unto Mount Arabim, unto Mount Nebo, a mountain within a mountain, which is the land of Moab, which is over against Jericho. And behold the land of Canaan, there it is, which I give unto the children for a possession. And die in the mount, whether thou goes up and be gathered unto thy people. As Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespass against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, 
because you sanctify me not in the midst of the congregation of, of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go in thither. You know, Moses never got into the promised land. Because God told him to speak to the rock, and he took that rod, and bam, bam, in anger. God put a roadblock up, and again, death. You're not going in that promised land. You did not sanctify me in the congregation. You might be such a bad example in your church of other Christians. Now, I'm not going to say you can't go to heaven. We're Old Testament. But you might be such a terrible Christian with bad living, sinfulness, that God may get to the point, all right, just come home. There are people that, that Paul says that they have no regard for taking the Lord's Supper. Some are dead. Some are asleep. Some of them, their roadblock is, is they're sick. A roadblock might be sickness. Might. Be sick. I didn't say all oh, sickness is because you sinned against God. I'm not saying all death is because you know you done so wages of sin is death. But if you think a great man like Moses who God said, with all that Moses went through, you can't go into that land because you did not obey my voice. King Saul, you are in trouble because you did not obey my voice. Achan, you're going to die because you did not obey my voice. Adam and Eve, you're going to die because you did not obey my voice. Churches will die because they did not obey God's voice. they rather serve the pagan idols of Easter and Christmas and the worldly, ungodly... Uh, Contemporary music. Having other Bibles besides the King James Bible. The other Bibles are not the voice of God. And, oh, we want great revivals. Why are we getting revivals? Because God has put a roadblock. You have sinned against God. So we repent and we... Evidently, you don't have the right spirit. You, you're you not fully repenting. You can't repent, oh, you know, we're sinners, and run back to your paganism. You cannot confess your sins and run back to your worldlyism. You can't say, God, I'm sorry, we want our natural revival, we want a revival, and you return back to your sin. You can continue to disregard the voice of God, and He's not going to lift that roadblock, barricade. It may even come to death. Some, not all, some deaths of the unsaved and saved and churches are. They did not obey the voice of God. They thought they were. They thought they were doing right. Achan thought, he, hey, what is a little Babylonian garment? 
They're going to hide in the sand. What is, you know, having a little affair against my wife or husband? I do it secret in a, in a hotel room. What is going out to the tool shed and having a, a cigarette? What are those little secret sins that Achan did? God saw it. Behold, the, the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold, the evil and the good. And God got to a point, okay, roadblock. And not only you are affected. You know, if you are in a good Bible-believing church, whether you are a part of the congregation, a deacon, a secretary, a Sunday school teacher, or even the pastor, or even a missionary out in the field. You and your life may be affecting the growth of your church and the Christian. The Southern Baptist Church are not going to go nowhere anymore when they've taken sexual sins and swept them under the carpet and don't bring them out before a holy and righteous God and do not pass judgment and correction and chasing upon those that are guilty oh they were caught oh we're sorry okay Aiken When you're about to violate the scriptures and ordain women, when you violate what God says, you are not going to grow. Go to big mega churches. Maybe I'll talk about that next week. As far as the eyes of God, you got a roadblock sign. It may be death. Achan did not die the day that God put that roadblock sign up. It took praying Joshua to say, God, what happened? God put that roadblock sign up for King Saul way back when he, you know what, we, we spared the best of the sheep for God. There was a roadblock sign there. He didn't go any further. It took a little while of empty living before he died. You may go on living and you may get your, your food, your drink, you may get little good things and but then you die not in favor of God. A great man like Moses. Oh, we got a great preacher. Yeah, he's a sinner. And if he's involved in deceiving the people, not teaching what is biblically correct, getting the people's, you know, they like me. Can't preach this, you know, they'll leave. They won't put money. They won't get into the King James Bible. They won't get rid of the pagan festivals. They adhere to the worldly nonsense and the I think what's the word Paul you puffed. Puff. They're puffed up. They're carnally living. They're not growing in the Lord. They are spiritually retarded because the pastor won't take charge. The pastor failed. They think he's doing great. The pastor dies. They didn't realize he had a roadblock sign 
the Sunday school teacher dies, and they get the glory, they get to the judgment seat of Christ. Where's my crown? You don't, you don't get no crown. You think I'm going to give you a crown for all that mess that you did? You think you're going to get a reward for that blasphemy that you taught? That music you allowed to be sung? You didn't even quote from my word. You did not sanctify me before the congregation. You know, I mean, you go into the if you're saved, you go into heaven. You ain't getting no court. Too many Christians think, oh, and you ain't going to get all. You're going to get. Uh -huh. Walking around New Jerusalem with your head falling. Because you didn't sanctify God. You sanctified the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are at war with each other. Numbers 14. Fourteen forty one. This is a good one for churches. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Yeah, you know, they sent the spies in the land, they come back, oh they're we're those grasshoppers, we can't beat them. Oh, they're so much bigger than us. we're not going to win except for two. No, oh, we don't we're losing. Let's turn around and go back home. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Let's bring the worldly music in. Let's get rid of the hymnals. All are welcome here. We'll preach fluffy sermons and nothing about sin or repentance. We won't stand on the street corner except for abortion issues. We won't tell you to we'll invite you to church instead of rather tell you about the death, burial, and gruesome activity of Jesus Christ. We'll disregard that Jesus said go in the world and preach the gospel. Well, we'll, we'll tell you about a church. We'll give you a movie. The four spiritual laws. But we won't tell you about the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that you be not smitten before the enemy. Moses tells the people, don't do it, God's not with you. We're going to forward our church, we're going to have great revivals, we're going and God's not with you. But we're going to go on. We're going to be under the banner of God. Moses said, you're not going. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you. Ye shall fall by the sword. The word of God. There are churches that don't have the King James Bible. The enemy will get you. Because you have turned away from the Lord. You turned away from the Lord by the Bible. You turned away from the Lord by, by your music. You turned away from the Lord by the message you're supposed to preach. You turned away from the Lord by your activities. You turned away from the Lord by your conduct. You turned away from the Lord by being carnal. You turned away from the Lord by being worldly. You turned away from the Lord. You read had the world favor. Listen, if the, if the world loves your church, you're not staying... I was in the church one time. You know, look, we got our name in, in the paper. We are a great, helpful church of the community. I don't love you. The world loves you. Jesus said, marvel not, the world hates you. The world loves you. You are in trouble. You're not living right. You're not speaking the truth. If they speak well of you, you're not speaking the truth. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presume to go up the hilltop. 
Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not on. Hey, we're going to go. We're going in with the world. We're going in with our entertainment. We're going in with gay pride. We're going in with our women preachers. We're going in there with, 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 our, with our contemporary music. We're going in there with, with our modern Bible. We're going to go in there with our puppy loving messages. We're going to go in there with love. We're going to go in with salt. We're going to go in with light. We're going to go in. God says, I ain't with you. Matter of fact, what you're doing, according to Revelation 3, the light of the sea in church age, you make me sick. You think you're rich, you think you're great, you think you're wonderful, you're poor, miserable, naked, and wretched. And you think you're going to go into battle and win. And then when Christ came down, the Canaanites would go out in the hill and smoke them and discomfort them, even to hormones. When you disobey God, when you rebel against the word, when God has put a roadblock, and you're going to go around that roadblock, you're going to go over that roadblock that God put, and you're going to do it without repenting. You're not, you're not going to do it with a contrite heart. You're going to get hit. It's going to bring death. The wages of sin is death. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Faithful and righteous. Virtue. Oh, that a person. I already messed it up. First John. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What we just read in, in Numbers, they didn't confess. Churches don't confess today. Oh, they may have an altar call, but that's so we can by right, one, two, three, four, four came. Write that down. All eyes closed, hands raised. Yeah, I see that hand. No, I see I've had my eye open. There was no hand. You liar. You want me to give your name? I'll give you a name if you want. I'll even give you a church location. Moses confessed earlier. We didn't read that part, but he confessed. But still, he got out of the way in Old Testament. But you know, Moses did get in the promised land. With Elijah, with Peter, James, and John, when Jesus is transfigured. Unless that mountain was Mount Sinai. In the tribulation period, Moses is coming back to the life. King Saul, he had a kind of repentance that, oh, my soldiers are watching me. Achan had a repentance of, oh, I got caught. So since I got caught, I'm sorry. Sometimes when we come to a complete stop in our Christian walk, or if you come to a complete stop in your life without Christ, God wants you to put the car in park, turn off the radio, and seek Him. And see where the troubles are. 
and be ready to hear and be ready to repent.